Well, uh, welcome. I am Lucas Fegan with Fegan Construction. Um, I am the social chair uh, on the steering committee of the YPN. Um, as you all probably know, uh, the YPN, uh, about a thousand plus members, uh, young professionals in the community helping Sioux Falls become you know, a better place day by day. Um, today we're fortunate enough to have a face that you probably all recognize uh, from his great accomplishments in Sioux Falls. Um, why don't we give it up for Mayor Mike Uther. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. <laughs> and Lucas, don't sit down. We're going to need you, buddy, to get, be ready to walk around. Oh, yeah. Be yeah. ready to walk around. Um, I got you. First of all, thanks for inviting me. Even though you may all know what YPN is, uh, the people of Sioux Falls and the, 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 all the people that watch uh, this, this program, they need to know more about YPN, uh, why it's important to engage you know, young professionals. Why in the world you folks stayed in Sioux Falls when you could have gone elsewhere? Why in the world you're trying to get others to move back here uh, to accomplish, you know, their professional goals or their personal goals or whatever it would be? Uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled to, to do this and, and I really look forward to it. Last month at um, my listening and learning session, Joel and I, we were at Roosevelt High School. Uh, engaging you know, young people that wanted to be young professionals someday. And now uh, I have the great opportunity to engage young professionals that have cho chosen to you know, live, work, and play in, in Sioux Falls. And so I think it'll be fun for the people of Sioux Falls to, to also you know, learn about what is important to you. you know, the, the good things going on here, thank you, Lucas, that was very, fine, very kind. Uh, but also we've got uh, some challenging things going on in, in Sioux Falls too. And so I'd love your perspective on, on what do you think we could do better uh, or your ideas on, you know, hey, Mayor, have you ever thought of this? Uh, so this will be fun. Uh, it's a listening and learning session. Uh, I can talk all dang day. I prefer to engage you. Uh, you can ask me questions uh, or you can just give me your input too. Uh, and again, you, we don't always have to agree. You can, if you want to make me mad, go for it. Um, it, it, it it's very appropriate. So again, thank you for uh, the opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, and you better have some questions. And, and Lucas didn't say this, but I'll say it. I, nothing is off limits. Nothing. Okay? And um, uh, I know young professionals. Um, I used to be a young professional. Uh, now I'm just a little bit older. Um, but I had a lot of spit and vigor in me, and still do, as you know. And so I'm really looking forward to some challenging dialogue today. And, and so let's, who's, gonna, who's willing to kick it off? Anybody? Lucas, get ready. Get up here, buddy. <laughs> Who, come on, folks. Thank you. Thank you. And just tell Someone's me, tell, tell the people who follows your first name. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Filsinger. Thanks, Chris. Uh, my name. And, and Chris, what do you do in town? Uh, I work for Cortrose Bank. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, the city spends, as you well know, and we probably all know, significant amount on uh, roads especially in, in keeping them uh, up to date and as well as we can. We have a little bit of a unique challenge where we're growing a lot too so there's a lot of miles put on every year. I'm curious what your thoughts are on kind of a long-term solution if there is one to that um, to uh, keep our roads and in, in infrastructure in, in the best possible uh, um, way. Great job. Um, it's interesting. When I was running for mayor and then elected for mayor, I had made a commitment that we were going to rebuild the infrastructure of, of Sioux Falls. And not only the, the stuff that you see, but also the stuff that you can't see. You know, the water lines, the sewer lines, uh, and, and things like that. And you're right, we spent a lot of money on infrastructure. In fact, two out of every three dollars uh, of your taxpayer money goes to this infrastructure gig. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that as much as I've tried to focus on repairing and rebuilding roads, uh, and by the way, we've got 433 miles of roads that have been repaired or replaced since I've been your mayor. That's one <coughs> side of the South Dakota border to the other. Uh, there was just a survey done, Chris, uh, by the people of Sioux Falls and uh, the people of Sioux Falls are not, still not happy. And I get that. I get it. You know, I think we've set new expectations here in this town about what we want. 
Uh, but road repair infrastructure investment is a beast. And then to compound that, when you are growing as fast as we are growing, uh, since I've been your mayor uh, over the last seven years, we've added the city of Watertown onto our city. So compound that, you know, not only keeping up with the repair needs that you have, but then also the growth needs. It's been a real challenge. Uh, but I do think that we are keeping up with the growth. Uh, we still have work to do. Uh, but one of the things that I'm really concerned about, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit, is that the way that we fund government in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota, uh, we, it is being challenged because of Internet sales. Uh, it's a really big one. Um, and so if you can't collect those Internet sales taxes to fund your roads, to keep up with growth, uh, it's going to be a real challenge. And it's already proven uh, to, to be that in Sioux Falls or in South Dakota. But uh, again, we, I think we do it as well as anybody. Uh, and yes, I, I am the Sioux Falls mayor, uh, but, but I actually really believe that. I think we're doing it as well as anybody across the country um, because one of the easy things that public servants can do, they just put their dang head in the sand and then just leave it for the next mayor. Leave it for the next council. Let them deal with the expense. And my goal has been I wanted to really strengthen the foundation of our city, including the, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, but then at the same time, I've been saying, well, let's get, let's get growing. And my goodness, are we growing. Uh, we added Harrisburg last year alone. 5,200 people last year alone. So uh, it's just, it, we're, we're kicking tail and taking some names. So good job, thank you. Uh, others, please, anything, yes, thank you. Lucas, don't sit down again. <laughs> thank you. Get He's over there. Get, all right, buddy, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank th you. Th thank you, guys. Uh, I'm Adam Walsh with MetaBank. Yes, Adam, thank you. Um, thank you for being here today. Um, can you update us on the progress of the, the city government building? Sure. And then also talk a little bit about what expectations we can get from the rail yard development and how those plans have been coming along. Okay, thank you. Well, let me start with the, uh, we'll call it the city administration building. Uh, that is a project that is on schedule. Uh, and maybe I'll give you a little scoop. Uh, it's under budget uh, right now. <laughs> In a, uh, in, a, in a very big way. And I've not shared that with anybody other than you folks and now, of course, the people of Sioux Falls. It looks really, really good. And uh, you're going to be incredibly proud of it when, when we're done. Um, and it was controversial. It was. Um, but what I just told Chris is that I wanted to leave the infrastructure better than the way that I found it. Uh, the last time we built a city government building, uh, was 1936. Um, Elvis Presley was born then. You know, Babe Ruth hit his home run then. Uh, so it's not like we're buying a lot of city government buildings every day. Uh, but we, we are growing. Again, we've added the city of Watertown in the last seven years. Uh, we actually have young professionals that actually give a darn about their work environment. Uh, what a concept. They actually care about it. And the old days of just shoving a bunch of people in some little cubes and asking them to be productive and then uh, insisting that they stay working at that company for 25 to 30 years, it's done. It's done. We actually have a Generation Z, a Generation Y, the millennial generation that actually cares about their work environment. And so one of the things that I think the city government needs to do uh, is actually care about work environment too, uh, in the spirit of attracting young professionals like you, keeping young professionals like you, making you productive, making you feel part of the, uh, uh, the, the solution, providing that good work environment. And our new building will do that and more. And it will serve the city long after I'm gone. Uh, it'll serve the city for at least 100 years, if not more, and uh, I'm just unbelievably thrilled about it, okay? But it was a beast. I, I took a lot of heat on it, uh, uh, but I, I still think it's going to be something that we're really going to celebrate. And just wait. When you're coming from the north down Minnesota and you're seeing 
our city for the first time as you're coming from the airport, it's going to be a really impressive uh, a thing to, to see and, and be proud of too. Uh, and then remember, we had a bunch of drunk people at Van Epps Park. Remember that? That was two years ago. Uh, we, had, we had people falling off of um, picnic tables, just hammered, uh, and it was all over the news. Uh, you know, what are we going to do with that park? Uh, that, that park is going to be one of the nicest in the entire city. And we're going to turn something that was an eyesore, something that was an embarrassment, and it, we will turn it into something grand for all of you for at least 100 years. Uh, then, uh, talk about the railroad. Let's talk about something that's even bigger than that, something that's going to impact the city for 200, 300, 400 years. I consider it the biggest accomplishment in this city, uh, at least in my seven years, and, and maybe, maybe ever. Because it's one of those things that's going to impact this city for a long, long time. Uh, Ten acres of land in the heart of the city of Sioux Falls, and it is going to be a reflection on what we're going to do for, for a long, long time. Uh, it al this one was one that I almost gave up on and I very rarely give up on anything. But I almost gave up on this one, but now we own the 10 acres of land. We've just uh, um, uh, received a number of proposals in terms of from companies who want to develop that land, and now we're gonna evaluate uh, not only those companies, but those proposals that they wanna come up as they're dreaming about, and then we'll start to develop that land. Uh, six different parcels, and now we'll see what we put there. Uh, I'm a guy, I like to get stuff done, you know that. Um, I usually like to go a pretty fast pace. This is one time, as your mayor, I'm encouraging us to take it slow. Be methodical. Really make these people fight to the end to ultimately get their project there. Because again, it's one of those that's gonna impact us for a long, long time. Um, I like to travel, at least I used to before I became the mayor, and um, there's all these grand uh, spaces in, in Rome and in Brussels and in London and in you know, uh, places like that, and, and I, I see us kind of creating that same thing. Uh, but again, it's not going to be my decision, I'm going to be done, uh, but I, I really have just high hopes for it. And I hope that we can put at least one shovel in the ground before I'm done being your mayor over the next year. Yeah, so hang on. It's going to be fun. Even when you guys are going to release those results as far as what those projects look like? Well, uh, they're still evaluating them now. And it's not just city staff. There's also some, uh, some uh, citizens as well. And then they'll, they'll um, as they find those that, um, um, you know, meet the mustard and, and they're, they're good, then they'll release them. Uh, but I don't, have a, I, I don't have a scoop for you today. I, I don't. Um, I, Thank you. Um, my name is Jack Gordon. I'm with Bill Thompson State Farm. Jack? Um, yep, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Um, Sioux Falls is certainly not alone when it comes to the role that gentrification plays in a city. I mean, if you look in Nashville, Omaha, Des Moines, D.C., um, you see that a lot of these new developments have maybe misplaced some of the, the lower-income people that have lived there before. What role do you think gentrification plays in the development of downtown Sioux Falls? And then two parts. Do you see a future of Sioux Falls, especially as we expand south, where we uh, see maybe an additional downtown district? Hmm. So, Well, as excited as I've been uh, about what w the change of this city, um, there is one thing uh, that I, I feel that I've really lost ground on. Um, and it's tied into gentrification, and that is providing affordable places for people to live uh, across our, our great city. Because again, remember, we're adding three to 5,000 people a year uh, since I've been your mayor. And so they're coming in here because they want a piece of this Sioux Falls pie. Uh, great, great quality of life, great place to raise your kids, great place to start, a, start your career. A um, uh, lot of fun, 88th busiest event center in the world, you know, all that stuff. We've got all this momentum, all this stuff is coming in, and so what's happening is that we've got kind of the older places of town, including downtown, 
that are getting purchased, refurbished, redeveloped, and guess what? As they do that, uh, it, it, it's, it's great for Sioux Falls uh, unless you were displaced from your, your home. Um, and booming economies, that happens a lot. Uh, so what we've done is even, I'll just talk about downtown. When I was running for mayor uh, eight years ago, um, I, could, I could go anywhere downtown and uh, you couldn't, you, you, I could have hidden places, you wouldn't have found me for months. Now, you've got all these buildings that are plumb full, you've got all these old buildings that are getting remodeled, refurbished, repurposed, and now you may have found a place that you could rent for X amount of dollars. Now it's double, triple, quadruple that um, because of the, the things that are happening. So um, our role is to not only spur on development, uh, not only make things better and more vibrant and stronger, but at the same time you still have to care for people who need, a, need an affordable place to live. And during my seven years as your mayor, I think we've lost ground. Uh, I, I think we have, uh, because everything's just booming. I mean, look at look at our look at around downtown. Just drive around downtown. Not only in downtown, but now start to go towards the south, towards McKinnon Park. All those old homes, they're getting purchased up by a lot of young professionals, and then they're getting repurposed. But it's not just. Uh, it's not just that area, it's all around, including all the, the outskirts of Sioux Falls too. So we're, uh, we've got some challenges, but it's not just Sioux Falls either. It's Yankton, it's Brookings, it's Aberdeen, it's Watertown. Uh, affordable housing is, is, is a beast. Then talking about growth and whether we'll ever have another downtown-like environment. I think so, I think so. And you see that um, as, as you go to big cities. And what's interesting though is that T will be part of Sioux Falls, or will be part of T, sorry T people, uh, uh, um, um, Brandon, Harrisburg, we will be uh, together uh, pretty close. So you're gonna have numerous downtowns, but also you've got places like uh, Dolly Farms, or Lake Lorraine, or out there by University Center, where we are right now envisioning new, new kind of downtown-like environments where young people, old people can uh, walk, they can ride their bikes, they can get together, they can go to a concert, they can enjoy each other. And that's what progressive communities do. That's what they do and we're trying to do that here. We're trying to, we're not competing against uh, Fargo or Rapid City uh, or, or even Omaha anymore. We want, to be, we want to go after the big boys and the big girls, and I think, that we, I think we've done that over the last seven years. Um, why in the heck are you folks staying here? I mean, you used to leave, and now you've stayed. I thank you. I think we want to make it worth your while. I want to make this the best place for young people, for retired people to live in America. I really do. I, I need you to stay here. We've got the lowest unemployment rate in the country right now. Not only do I need you to stay, I need you to get 3,000 more of you to come to Sioux Falls so to, to, to handle these jobs. And, and I mean that sincerely. We, that is another struggle, uh, is that we've got a great place to live, a great place to work, the lowest unemployment rate in America, but yet I can't find enough people to handle all the jobs to capture all the productivity, the, the uh, profitability goals that we have, we just don't have it. So, do you know some people? I have a question for you on that topic. All right, all right. <laughs> Lucas, come on, buddy. <laughs> First, tell me your name. My name is Francisco Aviram with MetaBank2. Francisco, um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And, and I don't even know why I looked at you, Francisco, but I'm glad I did. I, perfect question. It was Thank a you. perfect Thank uh, you. Uh, transition. Um, what exactly is the city doing to attract more people to the area outside of the upper Midwest region. So is their city doing anything, any campaigning, if you may, in the South and the West yeah. Coast to actually bring people from all, um, from a variety of uh, different income groups, uh, uh, job industries, et cetera. What is the city doing? Good job. And Francisco, we are, we are 
uh, growing up too. We're maturing, not only Sioux Falls, but the state of South Dakota. Okay, uh, Governor Dugard and his team uh, working collaboratively with groups like Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls Development, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and, and the city of Sioux Falls and, and, and others. Um, just did a study in terms of how are we going to address the workforce needs of our city uh, as well as our, our state. Uh, in the way that we used to do it is that we'd go to the small towns and the farmers and the ranchers around Sioux Falls and we'd recruit them to you know come off the farm, come off the ranch, come off the small town and come to Sioux Falls and that's how we used to do it. And then uh, we'd kind of maybe go a little bit around the Midwest because they were used to snow and wind and bugs and rain. Uh, and, and then we'd try that. Well, the study that just came out said, if you're going to address the workforce challenges that you have in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota, Francisco, they said, you've got to rely on a lot more than just the Midwest. You've got to rely a lot more on just the United States of America. If you're going to be successful, you have to recruit internationally to get people to come to your city. And I think that's one of the things that we're really trying to do, at least that I've been trying to do as your mayor, uh, really embrace diversity in a big, big way. Um, relish the fact that there's these hardworking people that want to work, uh, and they want to work in your city. And uh, we've been aggressively trying to spread the word. The governor's trying to do that and the Chamber, Sioux Falls Development, Forward Sioux Falls, and many others are out there trying to recruit people to come. Uh, and it's working in a way. You know, we've got a lot of people moving here, but still not enough when you're growing as fast as we are growing. Uh, but I mean it sincerely. If you know people who are looking for opportunity, please have them give Sioux Falls, South Dakota a shot. Uh, but you also know how hard it is sometimes to get people to understand uh, about Sioux Falls. You know, why would I go there? Uh, do, don't you have snow? Uh, do you have anything to do? Uh, really, do you, you've, got, you've got jobs other than just, uh, you know, uh, 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 something that pays eight bucks an hour? You're, you're darn right we do. You're darn right we do. I mean, we've got, we've got a ton of jobs. We've got a ton of jobs. You know, we've got... Agriculture is our foundation, Francisco. Yeah, no kidding. Agriculture. But then, you know, we built banking and financial services. We've got uh, health care that is just rocking and helped us through the, through, the, uh, through the recession. Now we're finding a cure for breast cancer, juvenile diabetes through our research activities. We've got four years of record-breaking construction. And after the, uh, the Avera announcement, Sioux Falls, it looks like we're going to have five straight years of record-breaking construction. We've got retail, we've got tourism, we've got manufacturing, we've got white collar, blue collar, gray collar, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got all kinds of opportunities uh, that, are, that are out there and this is why this is definitely a place to live, work, and play. As well as, we got a crap load going on in terms of fun too. Uh, I mean, we really do. Uh, we have improved the quality of life in Sioux Falls in a dramatic way over the last seven years, and that's a big deal, especially for uh, young uh, professionals, uh, Generation Z, Generation Y. It's very important, and I, and I respect it. Uh, James Yasker, Anderson James? Office Products. Um, what is it, so with the city being kind of dominated by financial services and healthcare, what is the city doing to attract other industries like biotech or software? Yep. Like yep. I... Um, and I know, I know it may feel like we're dominated by healthcare and, and financial services, and, uh, but we really do have multiple legs out there. However, um, you know, even the announcement that was made today by Midco uh, about now adding gigabyte um, uh, uh, technology here to, to the city of Sioux Falls, that's stuff that will help us attract um, jo different types of jobs, because you're right. T white, more white collar that are, that's technology driven uh, or research driven, those are also important. Uh, but at the same time, we're trying to expand other things like uh, um, uh, whether it be more, uh, more businesses that are associated with the agriculture-based community. 
Um, there's all these things where we're trying to expand uh, not only our economy, but also increase our legs on the stool too, because what happens, and it was it James? Yep. James. What happens is that if you are so reliant on one or two industries and they take a downturn, your economy or your city is going to feel it big time. And uh, so we're trying to really spread the wealth and, and we've done that. What do you think we need here more than, than anything? Um, who's got the mic? Can I borrow that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me what type of industry you think we need more of. I certainly would like to see a growth in like agricultural biotech in Sioux Falls. Um, you know, being in the center and the heart of the Midwest, it seems like an industry that we yep. could really um, benefit from having located here. And we're working on that. Uh, th that's all I can say. <laughs> uh, we are not only, not only to be fair, um, um, Governor Dugard, um, his economic development team, uh, the city of Sioux Falls, the chamber, forward Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls development. We are behind the scenes um, working to attract uh, uh, new companies to come to Sioux Falls and to come to South Dakota. And we like our chances, um, but it's hard. Uh, it's hard. It, it's, um, it, it, and we're not going to give it away. But we are working it, and, and but I think you'll just stay tuned. More to come, more to come, yeah. And folks, young young uh, young professionals, if I can just ask you a favor, please don't ever um, uh, forget about agriculture. Okay, I, I know we're becoming more white collar and more city like and and all that, um, but remember, our foundation is agriculture, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing. You want to keep cheering on ag in Sioux Falls because you want these small towns and these ranchers and, the, and these farmers, you want them to do well because when they do well, they spend their money in Sioux Falls. That's a really important thing and vice versa. So don't ever, um, don't ever forget about agriculture uh, here in, in Sioux Falls, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, who is up? Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm losing it. <laughs> You're going to take it away from me? Again? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm Sarah Andrews, the CFO over at Beckenau for Construction. Thank you, Sarah. You're, um, you're a busy, busy, busy group. Busy. Yes. <laughs> Which is great. Yes. Um, but one of the questions I had was just what your vision is uh, for the bike trail. I love using it, and I yes. know that we're redoing parts of it around the city, and I don't know <laughs> when that project is scheduled to be done and if there's going to be any expansion on the the 22 mile loop that's there or not. Uh, Very good. But. Um, my, my vision, this is my personal vision. When I was first elected, I wanted it repaired, okay? Uh, I wanted it repaired because there were some stretches of that b bike trail that were, that were struggling, okay? So I first wanted it repaired. Then my number two goal was to create more spurs to the bike trail, especially west siders, and north siders because when I was running for for mayor oh my gosh you couldn't believe what the west siders and the north siders thought about the south siders and the east siders <laughs> um, they would say Mike you know basically when is somebody going to care about the west side and when somebody going to care about the north side including bike trail access okay so we made that a priority to get more spurs for, uh, on the north side and and on the west side and we've made some progress there, okay? But we still need to do, to do more. Uh, as well as, we wanted to expand it, uh, create more, more uh, 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 routes to different parts of, of the, uh, the city. And we're doing that as well. Uh, however, everything is expensive. And as much as I want to do even more, there's all these other needs that we have too. And I think that's one of the lessons that I've learned probably the most is that even if you think you're making progress here, it's not enough for the people that really want that progress. And then you got all these other people who are going, well, why are you spending money on that? I don't ride a bike. I don't walk. So why, you do, why aren't you doing this instead? Um, but I think we've come a long way in terms of improving the bike trail. Uh, now you can go on that 22 mile loop and you never have to stop. Remember, we used to have to stop. Um, it's as safe as it's ever been. It's as fast as it's ever been. It's as smooth as it's ever been. We have more 
uh, spurs or, or links than we've ever had. Uh, and now we, we've got to do more because we need to get, we're starting to go out towards Harrisburg, towards T, towards Brandon, to the north side. Uh, we want to do that because, again, this quality of life thing, especially for young people, it's pretty real. Yeah, and it's good. And w actually, you know, another thing that I think we've lost ground on Sioux Falls since I've been your mayor, uh, I'm telling you all the, the, the thing. You know, public transportation, I think, is we've not gained much, much ground there. And young professionals, you should really care about that. Uh, and we've gained, we've gained no ground. In fact, I think we've lost ground. And in fact, if you use public transportation in Sioux Falls, you're pretty much held hostage by the routes that we have. Um, but in terms of adding more money to it, it's been a real struggle. Uh, and, and so, you know, here we are, we're growing out, but yet our public transportation system has pretty much stayed the same. And actually, Generation Z, Generation Y uh, retirees, they actually want better public transportation, and we're, we're struggling on that on that here in Sioux Falls. Yeah, and the money that we used to get from the federal government, guess what, that's gonna be gone. It's gonna be gone. And that's probably one thing too. Um, we cannot rely on the state or the federal government to solve our, 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 our needs. You can't, you can't. Uh, and I'm not trying to denigrate that, just, we can't. We're gonna have to learn to take care of ourselves here in Sioux Falls more and more. Uh, just like you folks are gonna have to learn to take care of yourselves more and more. Okay, and is that fair? I don't know, but it's reality. We've got to do that. We've got to do that, and and so becoming even more frugal and more prudent, uh, and prioritizing these uh, these needs and wants is going to become even more more critical. Yeah. So you're a biker. Yeah. Okay, and you do it for can, can Sarah. You do it for exercise, you do it, do you ride your bike to work? What do you, what do, you do it for? Uh, both, I ride my bike to work or I'll hop on the trail just to go running. Um, or we, our whole family went around the bike trail this yeah. weekend just for a family outing. Um, I'm, t I'm tentatively training for a marathon, so Good I job. gotta at some point learn to run that whole thing. So Good now job. that I said that out loud, I really have to do it. Yes you do, <laughs> yes you do. I ran my first marathon when I turned 40. Yeah, I ran grandma's. And yeah. now I'm training right now. I'm training for the, you want to run the Fargo half marathon with me? Uh, sure. All right. All right. <laughs> got that. I'm running, the, I'm running the Fargo half here in about four weeks. Oh, four weeks. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, Mine's not till October. I'm doing the Twin Cities. <laughs> well, I love it. It's, 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 that's a fun one. Yeah. It's a fun one. Well, I, uh, again, whether you're using it for, uh, uh, to improve your, your health or um, just for something to do with the family or as a safe way to get to and from work, those are things that we have to we have to care about. And then, where was my? Were you my down? Uh, are we going to create more downtowns? Yeah, yeah, you were, you were. Well, also as we're developing this city now, we actually have to focus on things like adding bike bike lanes or bike trails, walking. Where in the olden days, Sioux Falls, we could care less. Just put down some pavement. Get, we all got a truck, we all got a car, that's how we did things. Now it's different, it's different. We have to think broader than that, including walking trails, biking trails, bike lanes, all those things. It, it, uh, we, we're evolving as a country, evolving with our lifestyle, and you young professionals are helping us get there, and I love it. Yeah, and you. I know, like one of the things my husband always asked me about, he want, just the safety of there, and yes. I've noticed it's, I mean, it's, fairly safe, we don't have many incidents on there, but um, where I, the areas where I go, it's not as busy because I'm on the north side of town. And so um, just being able to be safe while I'm running yes. on there, because it's usually by myself or biking or whatever, so. Thank you, thank yep. you. Well, thanks for using, and good luck on the, let me know, let me know when you do it. Okay. One thing about a marathon, <laughs> uh, once you do it, uh, you can tell everybody, I ran a marathon. And no one can ever take it away from you. So, and again, it's kind of like every, whatever goals you set in your life, I don't care what they are. Uh, I mean, set the goals and then work towards them and then do them, do them. Uh, I, was, I spoke at Million Cups today and we were talking about entrepreneurial uh, uh, spirit and, and setting these crazy goals, you know, that, that some of us may have. You know, why in the world would you ever want to run a marathon? Why in the world would you quit your job uh, to run for mayor? 
you know, why in the world would you want to be an entrepreneur to come up with this? You know, why in the world this, why in the world that? People are going to try to talk you out of your dreams all the time. It's your deal. It's your life. It, it is. So, Sarah, if you want to run a marathon, run a dang marathon. But set some realistic goals, you know. First you're going to do a 5K, then you're going to do a 10K, then you'll do a half marathon, and then you'll, you'll train to 20 miles, and then you'll run it out and do 26. Uh, but you got to stay focused, you got to work at it, you got to sacrifice, uh, and it's not going to come easy, but it's your goals, and so, so go, go do it, and let me know when you do it. Thank you. Welcome. Well, uh, my name's Terry Liggins, okay. and uh, thank you, Mike, for being here. You're I welcome. really uh, enjoyed listening to you speak. I love, like watching you speak, and I've enjoyed watching you lead our city. Thank you, um, Terry. I do find you inspiring. My favorite thing about you is how you advocate for young professionals. Um, being a young professional, I've, I've heard that re reoccur in who you are, and I really appreciate that about you. So thank you for that. I have two questions. One's a little more lighthearted, the other one's a little more in the weeds. The first question is, uh, who cuts your hair? Oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Terry, I've been doing this seven years now. No one's ever asked that question. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so Terry, you thank, you. thank you, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Uh, um, I'm going somewhere uh, with this. Uh, all right, Sue Balls, here you go. Uh, uh, Amy Dickerson, uh, Amy, can you believe this is happening right now? Uh, <laughs> Amy Dickerson has been taking care of me and, and, and my hair yep. uh, since 1999 when we moved back to, to Sioux Falls. Yep. And uh, I love her. Yep. Uh, and, you know, not only does she cut my hair, but we talk about life yep. a lot. And, and um, you know, you may think bartenders hear everything. Uh, uh, hairstylists <laughs> hear everything, don't they? <laughs> don't they? They do. And so Amy is also a conduit for me in terms of, you know, Mayor, uh, they're saying this, uh, is that true? Or they're saying this about you or whatever. And, and Amy, uh, not, not only do I think she does a good job with my hair, yeah. uh, but she's also a good advisor and, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, inside spy uh, as well. But to thank you, Terry. Yeah, well, it looks great. And, <laughs> and, and the, the reason I ask, if you talk about young professionals and yes. the spirit of entrepreneurship, which, yes. which a lot of us embody, and we do appreciate having open-minded you know, people here in Sioux Falls, young professionals, older, older professionals, they're really open to our new ideas. Yes. And, and one of my businesses, I have a couple that I help friends out with, is a barbershop. And yes. we just designed a new logo, and it looks just like you. I oh, wanted you to check you, it Terry. out. Tell me what you think. Thank you, And Terry. I wanted you to consider being styled by our, my barber at Geek Boy. <laughs> turn right. it around. So it's called uh, Geek Boy Styles. Yeah, turn it and, around. And uh, so yes, uh, in fact, uh, Terry, I'll let you know the last, uh, when, you go to the, uh, when you go to the mayor's office or you go to City Hall, we've got pictures of all the mayors, okay, that are, that are there. Uh, Terry, yeah. the last four mayors. We've all styled our hair kind of the same way. There it is. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but Terry, good luck to you. And Thank you. Can, can, now, can I ask you, why, why are you, I mean, Terry, you and I, we are, uh, we're, we're, of, we're, we're not the same colored skin in any way, shape, or form. Uh -huh. Our backgrounds are a bit different. Sure. Uh, you're a motivator. I'm a motivator. You're a really good-looking guy. Thank you. I'm just trying to have good hair. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but why are you staying in Sioux Falls? Why? Well, for me, I mean, you mentioned it a lot. You know, I'm, my first responsibility is to my children. So I have an 11th grader who goes to Harrisburg High, and I have a four-year-old here as well. And being from Omaha, Nebraska, and the way I was raised, it was a lot more dangerous, a um, lot more crime, a lot more uh, just challenges. And uh, Sioux Falls provides so much more peace of mind um, for me and for raising my family. And then in addition to that, um, there's other just wonderful opportunities, like, like I said, as a young professional, as an entrepreneur. I'm a coyote. Um, so yeah, I'm a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a coyote. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I went to school down there a long time, and I competed for coyote athletics. And so South Dakota just became my second home. Okay. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just been warm, and I love the people here. I think we're all kind of similar in kind of Midwest values and stuff. So for me, it, it is home. It feels like home. But South Dakota and Sioux Falls specifically is, is very economically uh, booming and 
you exactly. know, embracing diversity, but most importantly, it's, it's safe for, for my children. Okay, you know, you've been very nice to me, and you're very, very nice about our city. But now, be brutally honest, what is one thing where we're, we still need a lot of work on? What do we need to improve on? Sure, and well, I'll just take it straight to my second question, which is in, in the work that I do. So I, I work in nonprofits and for nonprofits. I work with and for Lutheran Social Services. Okay. I also work with and for Face It Together Sioux Falls. Okay. And so our mission at Face It Together is to help individuals with drug and alcohol yes. addiction get well. Yep. Um, we have a vision, a bold vision of solving addiction. We know that we aren't able to do that without community support. Our model is a community-facing addiction approach. Uh, what we do at Face It is we provide our services for free. We know that individuals who are suffering and are struggling with addiction and, and, and use and misuse and abuse, um, the options for care and support often are limited due to the financial, their financial inability. And so what we do at Face It is we eliminate that by offering the service for free. And we're serving so many people and we're helping people get well. But in order to do that, we have to partner with businesses. Yeah. Um, we, are, we have what is called our workplace initiative. And so we go out and we meet with CEOs and, and benefit providers and e EAPs and those individuals that work all that and, and talk to, their, to them about addiction in the workplace because we know that 70% of the people that are suffering with addiction are employed. So and 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 this uh, this drug and alcohol deal is, uh, I believe, the one of the greatest challenges that you'll face uh, as you get older in in Sioux Falls or wherever you go. It is real. Um, for those of you who are worried about crime in this city, in, including me, whether it be crime in Sioux Falls, crime in Trip, South Dakota, crime in Brookings, crime in Chicago, whatever it would be. The, the driver of the crime, okay, it's very, very simple. It's drugs, it's alcohol, and it's mental illness. Yes. Okay, it, 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 it is real. Almost, I'm not going to say almost all, but, but the vast, vast, vast majority of the crimes that you're seeing, it's involving one of those three things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges that we have is that uh, getting treatment for any of those, including mental illness, okay, don't, don't minimize that. The treatment uh, uh, centers or the, the resources, they're very, very limited. Uh, they are. And we, we can hope that it goes away on its own. It just doesn't. Especially, folks, uh, uh, this meth deal, this meth deal, it, it, it is so real. It is so real. Meth is, is just attacking our city like you cannot imagine. And it's not just Sioux Falls, it's all over the country. Uh, meth, opioids, heroin. Can you believe we're talking about heroin in Sioux Falls? Heroin. Uh, it, is, it is so real because what's happening, when you, if you read in the paper tomorrow, uh, or if you watch on the newspaper uh, on, on TV tonight, and if there was a crime that's being reported, you could almost automatically say it was due to meth, or it was due to someone just getting royally blitzed or hammered, or it was due to someone with mental illness. That's the reality. That's the reality. And I want to fix it, but uh, uh, I, I don't have the capability to fix it. My dad was an alcoholic, okay? Uh, my dad eventually quit drinking, uh, but I know what, what alcohol can, can do to a family or, or to a good person. Then you take drugs or meth. Uh, and you try wet meth one time, then you're not going to get that high back that you got the first time, and then you, so you just keep doing more and more stupid things. And here's what's happening. Well, again, go to the, go to the Sioux Falls paper or the uh, Eureka paper or the Brookings paper. Here's what's happening. First, they're stealing crap uh, from their families. Then they steal crap out of unlocked cars. Then they steal more crap out of unlocked garage doors. Then what they do is they start to knock off uh, convenience stores or even bigger things, all in the spirit of feeding that habit that they're, they're struggling to, 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 to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I, I commend you for your work. Uh, we need about a thousand more of you to treat the issues that are out there. Yeah. But Sioux Falls, if you're worried about the crime problem, uh, focus on drugs, alcohol, and mental illness. 
because those are the things that are that are impacting us the most. So, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You. And, and we're going to be able to do more of that, Mayor, if we have more partnerships with with the business community, because that's you. how we keep our doors open. We we talk, we meet with them, and we let them know that this disease is here. It's in the thank workplace, you. and if we allow for us to help them get well, we're going to increase their productivity. The absenteeism is going to go down. We're going to pack that bottom line so we can do more. We face it together. Sioux Falls can grow more with more partnerships from the business community. He's a, he's a marketing guy, isn't he? <laughs> I love it. And thanks for, um, you. I think, uh, Terry, yeah. I, I don't know if you heard Terry started off uh, when I asked, you know, why are you staying in Sioux Falls? Uh, and he started off, I think, with the right answer. He said, well, he talked about his kids. He wanted to be a good dad. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, that's a, it's a great, great lesson uh, for, for everybody. Uh, so, so good job. Thank you. Others, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've talked about uh, business. We've talked about... First name, please. Oh, um, Dave Steenstra. Dave. And what do you do, David? Sioux Falls Christian Schools. Thank you, David. Um, and so I have an education-related question. Thank you. Um, we've talked about huge amount of growth happening in Sioux Falls. Um, I've talked about people moving in from the country, talked about people moving from out of state, yes. uh, from out of the country. Uh, it represents a lot of challenges, just the growth. Um, always when you get an influx of outsiders, you deal with different cultures. Um, and uh, uh, you talked about also not being able to rely on federal government, state government for funding always. Um, so I'm, uh, and also with the, the changes in uh, education leadership uh, at a federal level. Yes. I'm curious if you could just talk about uh, the perspective and the priorities of the school system here. Yes. Um, current challenges and future challenges and uh, kind of a broad question, but I'll let you take it. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, uh, my wife and I, we're just huge advocates of, of education in general. Um, private education, public education, elementary education, preschool, uh, community colleges, uh, PhDs, I don't care. If it's education related, Cindy and I are, are we, we want to invest more in it. Here's the reality. It's one of the first things that we cut in South Dakota and in America is education. Uh, I remember, you know, I grew up in Yankton High School, uh, Yankton Middle Schools, and I remember I had all these opportunities when I was in fifth grade and then eighth grade and then high school. And, and sadly, all those opportunities that I had, and now we've taken them away from, from our kids because education is one of the first things that we, that we cut. Uh, and, and I don't understand why, but, but, but we do. Um, and at the same time, Dave, what's happening is that now that we've cut all, you know, much of the funding, now it's almost become a have versus have nots type of situation. Uh, you know, the people that can, that can afford to be in extracurricular activities, uh, or the people that are participating in extracurricular activities, really more and more it's the people who can afford it. Uh, the people who need the, uh, the extra help to get them to learn how to read or, or to do math or science. Uh, we really struggle because we don't have a lot of, of resources, private schools or, or public schools. So my own personal opinion is that it should be one of the first priorities, uh, in, and I think that we struggle to, 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 make, to make it so. Um, and again, watch the uh, Roosevelt High School uh, listening and learning session I just did last month. There was a, a young student in the back who she just kept going, but. Mayor, it seems like we're, we're cutting more and more programs. You know, wh why is that occurring? And again, I think it's because we are struggling with our priorities. Uh, we're, we're tightening our belts here, and then we're putting money there. Uh, and I'm not going to get into a big political discussion right now, even though I bet some of the people are waiting for me to do that. You know, I, I just have, I think we all have different priorities. We just all do. And uh, it's this battle uh, in terms of are we going to put money in, in, an, uh, in a, an 11-year-old or a 4-year-old or are we going to put more money in, in something else? But it is a real challenge. And you're, you're a private school. I mean, th that's e I think it's even a greater challenge because you, you raise the bulk of your funds through private resources. 
Um, uh, regardless whether you're at a, a Sioux Falls private school or a Sioux Falls public school, I still like your chances that you're going to succeed in the world if you go through our system because we've really, we're doing good things here, even with limited funding or more limited funding. Um, um, I mean, what do you see? What do, you, do you think that we're, are you, you must be worried about the funding. Well, I know that the tendency is to cut education. It is. Um, but I also know that education is, is very foundational for the culture, uh, for having an educated people. And uh, I guess that's a, that's a broad concern I have uh, nationally and globally, is that um, we're just not investing enough mm -hmm. in education and that foundation, teaching people to think and analyze and reflect uh, and understand, understand the changes around them and how to adapt uh, to be able to keep and uh, keep growing. One of the, and, and I'll probably make some people mad, uh, but if you look at the return on investment from preschool or pre-K education, it, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. But we don't have any preschool education really uh, on a grand scale across the state in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we don't. My hometown of Yankton, They've not been able to pass an opt-out to raise more money for public schools uh, time and time again. But for some reason, and I'm proud of them, they've now implemented a pre-K program or a preschool program. But those are those things that to me, it would make sense, why not grab these young people when they're young, give them a good foundation, teach them how to, how to read, how to write, how to engage others, how to be productive. Uh, why don't we do that as soon as we possibly can but again, we, we refuse, to, we refuse to, to look at it. Um, and one of the things, though, that I'm excited about uh, your generation, okay, and I'm not trying to, uh, you, you folks, are, I think, are, are trying to take it back. I think you're trying to come back around to some of these things that are, that are a bit more, I think, important, uh, such as, you know, when I, was wor when I was graduated from state, sorry, uh, I went and found a job, and then I moved to that city, okay? You folks, uh, what you do is you look for a good place to raise your family, a good place to live, and then you go find a job. Uh, so I think your priorities uh, are, are, are good. I think they're good. Uh, but it's gonna, it's, there's going to be some real challenges uh, that are going to come, and uh, you're going to have to lead uh, and, and help, help, help us accomplish those. Um, and again, maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm so focused on uh, the young professionals, okay? Um, I have, I had all kinds of spit and vigor when I was your age. Uh, I was going to change the world. I still have a bunch of spit and vigor, even though I'm a little older. Uh, but you folks are going to have to lead. We're, we're going to have to rely on you in the biggest ways. Uh, you're going to have to make the change. You're going to have to lead. You're going to have to tackle the tough things that are yet to come. And there's some tough things that are going to come. And so, quickly, just a show of hands, and it, it, I asked you on TV, how many of you would consider public service? Raise your hand. Wow. What, can, can you do that again? R higher, please. Joel? That has never happened before, ever, 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 uh, that, that I've been, that is the most by far that I've ever had consider a public service role. In fact, it's like pulling teeth to get anybody to, 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 to do it. Uh, ah, powerful. Please do it. Please consider it. Whether it be a city council election, a school board election, a mayoral election, because I'm done. Uh, mayoral election, whatever. <laughs> Please consider it. Uh, folks, we need you to lead. We need you to to sacrifice. We need you to, to take the barbs that come your way when, when you make these tough decisions. We need it. We need it. Uh, and, and especially we, we need it right now. So I, I commend you. I, I commend you. And people, again, remember I said they're going to talk you out of your dreams. They are. But who cares? I, I mean, I, I, this was my dream since the sixth grade. And I was able to accomplish it thanks to a lot of support from a lot of people. And I love it. I love it, and if I can encourage you to do the same thing, do it. Uh, I mean, it was, it was almost 70% of the room said you'd consider it. I'll, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Anybody consider running for the next city council? I'm going to get you on TV right now. Uh, well, if you want, just give me a call. I'll, I'll help you. But thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Um, you know, in this faith-based journey, too, uh, again, we all have different faith and, and, and things that, that drive us. But again, you know, I, I try to encourage people to, to work for it, to study for it, and then, yeah, to, to pray for it. This, this journey that I'm on, I can't figure it out. Uh, but I, I tell you, I'm, I'm blessed by the day that I get. Uh, I know that it's bigger than me. There's a lot of things that have happened in my life that I cannot explain. Uh, so, you know, regard, whatever your faith is, um, embrace that too, okay? Okay, whatever it is, okay? Um, and talk about diversity. I mean, we've got a bunch of diversity going on. It's not just, you know, the, the color of our skin diversity. Uh, it, it's not just that. Uh, but, it, but it's so much more. It's, it's religious diversity. Uh, uh, it's, it's cultural diversity. Uh, we, we actually talk now about uh, sexual orientation in, in Sioux Falls and in, in South Dakota. We, we didn't do that 10 years ago. Now we actually do. Uh, we are all different. We're all unique. We're all special. We all have value. And now, Francisco, uh, we're actually embracing each other more than we've, we've ever done in Sioux Falls. And, and I made that a commitment that, that I would tackle it, and I love it. Not everybody loves it, but I love it. I love it. And I think that, I think that uh, it's going to help us in the, in the long run, okay? Um, uh, and, yeah, there are, but there's challenges that come along with it, too. There are, but I, but I, but I love it, so thank you. Others? Uh, yes? Thank you. No, you're welcome, Francisco. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. Do we get a go? We got a couple more. Okay, minutes. okay. Uh, so maybe can we just end on? Um, end. You said I had a couple more. Couple, couple more minutes. Okay, a couple minutes. So, okay, thank you. So why don't we just end with maybe some advice from you uh, to us as young professionals as we continue to grow within the city, uh, within our companies, within our industries? Um, just some advice from from you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And and thanks for uh, uh, doing this, uh, Lucas. I, I appreciate it. And and to all of you. When, when um, uh, Cindy and I, we rushed over to the pancake breakfast, uh, I sucked down three pancakes, two sausages, and a milk in about probably eight minutes. And, then I, and as I was driving here, it was, it was raining. And I go, no one's going to show up. And when I got in here, <clears throat> I was just thrilled to have this chamber room full. I love it. It just motivates me. And, and it should motivate the people of Sioux Falls um, that I think that we are in good hands here uh, in, in the future. Um, I am I'm struggling right now because uh, I'm, um, I'm the commencement speaker for South Dakota State University here. Uh, in, I, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm the commencement speaker and, and I'm I'm struggling over what I, you know, how am I going to inspire <clears throat> these people, uh, whether it be the, the graduating students, whether it be their, their moms, their dads, their grandmas, their grandpas, and, <clears throat> and I'm really struggling over the, the topic because um, it's just a, it's a, it's a kind of a, another dream come true for me. So now Lucas is asking me, what, what advice do you have for, for us as young professionals? And, and it, here's, here's what I'll tell you. Um, first of all, I, I think that some of my, my toughest coaches, my toughest teachers, my toughest bosses, those were, I think, some of the most influential that I ever had. Uh, because they never accepted less than what I, could, what I could give. They were always challenging me to do more. And so maybe that's just one lesson for all of you, is that, is that if you get someone who's really pushing you, uh, and maybe even in ways that you're not comfortable with, you know, uh, uh, to, to do more or to try harder or, or to fight with more spit and vigor, um, enjoy it. Relish it. Uh, learn from it. Uh, when you're training for this marathon, the thing I, I remember, I, I wanted to run it in less than four hours, my first one, it was Grandma's in Duluth. 
ran it, wanted to run it in less than four hours. Um, I, I ran it in 358, uh, I think it was 26. So I, I hit my goal. That wasn't the big deal for me. The big deal for me was all the, the pain and the sacrifice and the, the soreness and, and uh, all, you know, all that. It was the struggle to keep going, keep fighting. So that would be probably one thing that I'd, I'd recommend. This is going to sound corny, okay? But young professionals, here's the deal. You got to work your butt off. You just do. You just do. You know, when I ran for mayor the first time, I was not going to let anybody outwork me. And I've tr now that I've been your mayor, I've also wanted to do that same thing. I don't want anybody to outwork me. If you need me, I'm going to be there. I do, I'm doing all these things in a day, and I love it. I'm working hard. I'm exhausted at the end of the day. But why not? Why not work your tail off at the highest level to, to make good things happen for you and for your family and to get the most out of life? I know that sounds corny. Oh, yeah, my dad tells me the same thing or my grandma tells But it's the truth. The harder you work, the luckier you are ultimately going to get. Okay? But it's hard. Work is hard. Uh, it, it is. And, you know, just work your, work, work your tail off. Take some dang risks, okay? Please, I beg of you, make some mistakes. Mess up. Screw up. Make some mistakes. Because if you're not, then you're not, you're, not, you're not reaching high enough. You're not taking enough risks. And guess what? You're not learning enough. Because a lot of your learning is going to come from the mistakes that you make. That's where you're going to build that crust on your body, those scars on your back, those, you know, the, the scrapes from clawing back up after you screwed up. Make some mistakes, okay? You, and again, I, my, my, there is a generation where, you, where we didn't allow you to make mistakes. We didn't want you to fall. We didn't want you to fail, okay? That was a big mistake. It's huge, huge. Now I'm telling you to screw up, make mistakes, fall, scrape your knee, uh, uh, make yourself fight to get back up, you know, into the ring and, and keep going. So please, please do that. Uh, another one is, you know, you, you, you can work as hard as you want to, and you could really be a good employee. And then you're always wondering, well, why didn't I get the promotion? Or why did they overlook me? Because you didn't market yourself like this guy is doing. Okay? You, you do have to go out there. You have to let people know at your firm, at your church, at your school, within your community. You have to let people know who you are and why you're valuable and why your business is as good as it is, okay? Because you really have to compete. When I was elected mayor, I, I made a point. I said, we are no longer going to compete against the little girls and the little boys. We were going to go after the big boys and the big girls. And we've done that, and I love it. We were in the Wall Street Journal two weeks ago. The Wall Street Journal, okay? We are being, they're, they're, they're now wondering, how is Sioux Falls doing it, okay? Because we are reaching higher. We are letting people know about our success. You need to do the same thing. You do. Uh, and so I, I would encourage that. And, and then maybe last but not least is just really just um, take the day and, and just make the most of it. I'll give you, I'll give you, um, <clears throat> when I was running mayor for the first, uh, well, when I ran for mayor the first time, I, I, now I have a, a, on my computer, um, it, there's, a, there's a, just simple words, did we win the day? Did we win the day? Okay. And the reason that that was so important is that when you're running a campaign, there is an end to it. And once that day is over in the campaign, you never get it back. You never get it back. It's gone. Okay, and then that election's coming, so you, at a minimum, you better win that day, okay? My dad, even though he, he drank a lot, um, he also smoked a lot. 
He gave up drinking. He never gave up smoking. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with uh, uh, a brain tumor on my daughter Kylie's birthday. Uh, Ten days later, we were uh, in the doctor's office, and my, my dad's doctor uh, basically said, Minard, hey, you've got at least a year to live. Now go out there and, you know, relish the day and enjoy the day and make some memories with the family and all that stuff. Um, my dad died the very next day. And so my advice to you, uh, uh, Lucas, and, and to all of you, is that really relish the day. Make the most of it. Um, it it's just so special uh, to, to, you know, if I wasn't your mayor, there's no chance in heck that you folks would be listening to me right now. now. This is a big deal for me. I love it. I love it. I mean, having Joel go on these uh, crazy listening and learning sessions with me every 30 days, uh, I, just, I just love it. And, and I want to make a difference, and I want to impact you, and, and I want to motivate you. I want to motivate you know, the city that I love and, and these people that are watching. But, but that, that's probably the most simple advice I can give you is just, just relish the day. Uh, go for it. Make good things happen. Um, don't let the <laughs> don't let some of the bad people get you either. Uh, you know, uh, surround yourself with positive people, positive things. And but anyway, I, I could go on forever. I'm so sorry, sorry. I'm so, I'm boring you probably. Uh, Sioux Falls, sorry. But thank you for letting me do this memory today. Uh, thanks for engaging me today. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a good program for the people of Sioux Falls. And Sioux Falls, you know, I, I said it at Roosevelt High School, but I'm really going to say it now. I mean, look at, look at these people. Look at these people. You had, you had 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10 that said they'd be willing to be in public service. You've got all of them. They, they're they're spit-shined, and they look good. They're, they're, they're leading. They're making a difference. They're productive. They're, they're doing good things. Uh, they want a city that's better than, than what we've got today. I think that's great, too. And, and, and maybe more importantly, they choose to live in Sioux Falls versus Minneapolis or Austin, Texas or Chicago, Illinois. They actually think that this is a better place than those places. And you're right, because I've lived in those other places. This is better. So, you know, Sioux Falls, let's feel good about it. And, and uh, YPN, if you'll invite me back, I've only got a year to serve, invite me back, and then we won't even do it on camera, and then we can engage each other more, okay? So um, thank you for the memory, and thanks for letting me serve you. Make it a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Lucas? Thank you, buddy.